Hey guys, it's just a random video doing on this Onan CMQD 10,000 diesel generator I just picked up. I got it to replace my MEP 803A, which I'll show you in a minute. So we're gonna kind of do a tour, start up of this, show you how loud it is, and then uh, maybe do some maintenance too. But I guess let me show you the MEP first. I'll show you what I'm upgrading from and the reasons why. Also a 10,000 watt diesel generator, mil spec. Picked this up many years ago. It's been super reliable. A few of the reasons I'm upgrading is it weighs 1,200 pounds versus the other one weighs 760. The parts for it are very hard to, to come by and get in case of a failure. It takes two 12 volt batteries to start it, you know, 24 volt starting. And then the engine in this is a Lister Petter four cylinder diesel and this thing is just really stinky when it runs. Kind of hard to get parts for too. It's a it's much older design. One of the, the big benefits of this unit is it's, it's, see this massive generator head on. This actually has three phase power too, which you can easily switch over. But let me, let me fire this up and just show you how it sounds and we'll run back over. This hasn't been started in quite some time. Uh, only 286 hours on this unit. And check this out, it's pretty cool. You can pop those two. Uh, tacks off and here it goes and look at all the wiring in this guy so one of the biggest problems with these is getting uh, these components in case of failure can can be tough like this one master switch right here very very expensive the voltage regulator same same deal but this is where you can switch over to the three phase 20 208 or you can go one phase 120 to 240 whatever so obviously you've been on the, the 240 120 and yeah, that's actually the master switch here this is the the phase switch the ones that are very expensive but i was reading they go bad so anyway to fire this up go preheat it's about 20 degrees out right now so we'll preheat this for oh that should be fine we'll go master fuel let that prime hold that until you get oil pressure and then you can let off if you don't wait till you get oil pressure it will shut down see see how much it's already smoking right now look at that i can when you run this thing it is like you can smell it all the way out front in the street in the neighborhood it usually doesn't smoke that much that's just because it's, it's You can see I've turned this into a trailer because I don't have a way to move this around otherwise. My tractor can't even lift it. This does have a built-in nine gallon fuel tank with a real nice fuel strainer that comes in here. And then if you want to hook it up to an auxiliary tank, it actually has another pump built in so you can just run this to. I pumped all the way from my basement tank with this little pump in here. So that does work very well. And I suppose that concludes the brief tour on this. I think my favorite part is the instrument panel. Lots of, uh, information there for you right it does have a trailer tongue but it's removable and you just slip it into that two inch receiver okay and back to the onan this only needs one 12 volt battery to start it does not have a built-in fuel tank but you can see this one came with an aluminum tank off of a, a reefer trailer the biggest reason i upgraded is because this has a kubota d1703 1.7 liter three cylinder diesel and it runs super clean compared to that old lister petter uh just just a much much better engine let me show you what that looks like inside um, there's not as much access to work on this uh i haven't done any maintenance yet so i'll probably do an oil change and check the air filter and such but uh, it's much more compact design it does kind of stink that it doesn't have more covers that come off looks like you you, know, you do have all these 10 mil bolts to take off the expose everything but let me fire this up for you now no three phase on this though not that i need that but maybe one day i'll have a lathe or something i need it for i just got it hooked up to a jump pack and to start you simply hold that down it's going to preheat it for as long as it needs to and then it's going a little bit longer today much quieter to me they, they actually rate this at 70 uh, decibels at 10 feet away and i was reading up the rating is basically the same on the mep but this is this is light years quieter and no smoke look at that didn't even puff when it started 
Uh, this thing, you, you can't smell it even when it's under load. So let's go put a load on this now. Let it warm up for a second though. You just flick the switch on. I don't have her feeding right here. So to switch over, just grab that and switch over. And now we're on generator power. I can put a 6,000 watt load with this heater. Put that on high. And listen to that, at 6,000 watts, still whisper quiet, no smoke. I'll show you the load difference. We'll turn this off. And here goes the 6,000 watts. Barely notice difference. Now that is only a resistive load, but I was running an air compressor with this the other day and it can even take those really strong surges just like the MEP 803A. And now I think I'll do some basic maintenance on it and then mount this somewhere as my permanent home backup generator. This is really rated as like a mobile generator, but for the amount of times I'm gonna use it, this, this will work just perfect. And then I'll, I'll keep the MEP still for when I need three phase or in the event I have to tow it on site. Uh, you know, that works good for that too. After removing a handful of 10 millimeter head bolts, you can take the lid off and look at all the access we have now. The muffler, the starter, alternator, water pump. Everything is super easy to get to. You can fill the oil up here or you have, aux you have an auxiliary fill right here that goes into the bottom. Here's the oil filter. Uh, down under this cover is the fuel pump. And then there's a fuel filter behind it, uh, that, that little little gray box right there. So that seems a little bit tight to get to. The air filter, you take off three bolts of taking your coolant bottle out which actually has the rad fill on it there's the radiator cap right there goes into the cooling system now you have access to get the air filter out you pop those latches pull that back and look at that i'll blow that out since it looks fine otherwise by the way this does have oh, i got some water in there but this has 1215 hours on it Here's a better look at that panel and some of the service information in case you guys want to look at that 6.7 quarts of oil. Got some part numbers there without my finger in the way and 1540 is probably the best oil to run in this. Under this cover is your main electrical hookup and then I assume this is for a remote control to power, uh, power this. One thing I like is that the radiator is on the bottom. You do want to make sure, like there's no screen or anything, you want to make sure you don't puncture that. And I can actually feel it's it's kind of caked up with crud, so I'll have to make sure to clean that rad. But uh, like on the MEP, it's sitting up here and has that, you know, all the rainwater and everything's just entering in there. It's got a big drum fan right here. You probably can't see it that well, but that's attached to the front of the crankshaft. It's pulling air in through the radiator, across the engine, and then back out the bottom. It's a little inconvenient to drain the oil. I was just looking it up, should be on the bottom, so I'll have to lift this up, or I suppose you could pump it out if you wanted. On the MVP, it's super convenient. It's got an oil drain right on the side. So you just put a little funnel under that, and then look, just one ball valve. It's got a fuel drain, and on the other side, it's even got a coolant drain. Where is that at? Oh yeah, right over there. It's got a coolant drain there. Those are pretty convenient items, but the other huge gripe with these are you would think it's easy to take all these covers off, but it's not. There's actually nuts on the back side of all of these screws. See that? As you go zipping them off, well, A, you end up losing the nuts, but what else happens is they rattle apart over time because this thing vibrates, and then the nut goes and gets lost in there and the bolt falls out. I think this hook would be the center of mass, huh? Maybe if I grab it from the other way, eh, it should make a difference. Convenient that the drain plugs on the bottom of this for the oil. Oh, here it goes. Wow. Can't go home because my baby, she don't love me. 
Is she gonna be a leaker? Uh, yes, yes it is. I now see why the generator has oil all on the bottom because there's just not enough room to put a chute in there and when the filter comes out, it's just not enough room. Or maybe somebody just had the wrong filter because this OE replacement by Fleet Guard is a lot smaller. Wow, look at that. Okay, yeah, that filter in there was massive. I'm not gonna lie, this fuel filter location's not great. Unless, what do you take, the whole bracket off maybe? Yeah, maybe that's it. Okay, all right. Not a terrible fuel filter location. As long as I can pop this on out of here. That's it, all right, that's, that's not bad, okay. And that seems to be what was leaking too. Yeah, I, this has got oil all over the, or fuel oil all over the bottom of it. So I think that's our uh, diesel leak. Just shove her back in there and make sure you don't kink the hoses. This fuel filter is easy to access too, just two 10 millimeter bolts and then it has enough hose extension to, to pull it out, or hose lead. And I did find uh, this guy on the other side was loose. I got a full turn out of it and then some. That could have been the fuel leak too. I decided to keep it in here instead of over by the house. Got the services documented and we're ready to fire it up. See if it fires after that uh, fuel filter change. Fuel tank sitting here too. I got this marked return supply vent. And then just put one of those glass fuel filters on the vent to prevent bees or anything from going in there. And what I don't like is there's no separate button for the fuel priming, which is kind of a problem because there's definitely air and, and you don't wanna get air in the high pressure fuel system. There's like barely any fuel in here either. And we're dipped in about an inch of diesel. And actually I stand corrected, if you push this switch down, the fuel pump keeps cycling. So I'm gonna let that go. And we see our pre-filter has just filled up. So I'll go, let that go for probably a minute. 45 seconds later, I can hear fuel coming through the return into the tank. That's good sound. Now we're ready to fire this up. And here she goes. We got good charging voltage too, 14 volts. Gotta check for fuel or oil leaks, and now all I gotta do is top off the oil, check that level, and we're done. And I suppose that wraps up this video. Hopefully this gave you a good idea what the Onin CMQD 10,000 is all about. Here it is side by side with the MEP 803A. Got some cleanup to do in here still. Get a new battery on this, or just run cables long enough so it can jump onto one of those since this is always on a trickle charger and yeah maybe lift it up one day on a rack so you can put more stuff in here thanks for watching if you did and hopefully see you in another video thanks guys no nonsense no hell over out